Hello, today I'm going to show you how to build the Q-Lite OSD. Uh, this is a board that I've designed um, to fly sport mode, FPV, where you want to have all of the possibilities of the on-screen display, but not needing or wanting the flight controller to pass through. So in this video I'm going to show how to, to assemble the kit, what it comes with, and how to load the firmware. And in a future video, we'll go over how to compile the firmware yourself, make adjustments to it. Starting with the resistors, this is the 7.5. I recognize it by the light green uh, stripe on there. And this is the 30K. And we will start with those in, in the board here. And then on the back, just pin just bend the pins out, make sure it's flush and everything looks fine. We'll solder those in a second. And I just hit heat the base and the hole and the solder will just wick around it. Then we're going to trim off the excess wire. The next step is to add the Mini 360 voltage step down. I just start by clipping off four of these header pins and then we'll solder them into the board. After preparing the four pins, stick them in with a long pin down, and we'll trim that off after we solder on the Mini 360. Now, this is, a, this is important that you get the arrow direction correct. On the back, it shows uh, the way the voltage step down goes, and so you need to match that with the arrow on the board. After placing the Mini 360, then you just solder the, all the corner pins down by heating the base and then applying the solder. It takes a little bit of a steady hand. These solder pads are kind of small on this board, but if you, it should work. Just touch it. And then after we get these pins soldered on top, then we're going to flip it over and solder the bottom. Solder this is just a little awkward, but if you get solder on one pin and then you can level it, um, that should work. So lift it up and heat it, and then you get it pretty flush. Now that one pin will hold it in, and we can do the other three pins. And then trim off the long pins off the back. We will now connect the battery, the pack battery, to the pins here to supply the flight pack battery. You can uh, select any power adapter that you like. Personally, I like to use the three cell balance lead. Uh, so I only use one battery on the flight for flight. And uh, if you want to power the, the video unit, and the OSD, you simply plug this onto the flight pack balance lead, and you can see we got the positive and outer negative pin, which gives you the full voltage. And in this case, for a three cell, it would be 12 volts. For best result, pre tin the end of the wire that's going to go through the hole, and make sure you get the positive with the positive and the negative with the negative correctly, as that's always critical. And I applied solder to the tip before I touched that there. Before going any further, you'll want to set the output voltage of the step down using the dial um, right here. This, this is a potentiometer that lets you adjust the output voltage, and so we're going to have to vo voltmeter that. 
and I'm just using a, a really cheap one here and you'll want to set it to like the 20 up here DCV and you can read the, the voltage plug this in and then we can read the voltage on a couple of the pins basically I'm putting the positive end in the 5 volt positive and the negative is at any of the grounds but by default this is going to read about 10, 10 volts and so we need to dial it down so it will output between 5.5 volts and 6 volts this will give us the most accurate accurate uh, voltage reading in the OSD to do this I use a flat small flat screwdriver that will fit in the potentiometer and I find that if you use a Phillips often it'll just spin in there but if you get a flat with sharp edges it'll grab and turn it all the way to the right okay I've adjusted the dial down and when I read it now pins I'm going on this is on the D6 positive that should be the 5 volt that comes out of here and then on there and when I read it I'm reading 5.93 so I'll zoom out and that's between 5.5 and 6 volts so that'll be perfect adding the BMP 280 you'll see that the pins are marked on the back side of the board and you'll need to make sure that you line up the the pin labels with what we have on the the board here get the VCC etc and ground so on this board on the main board we only use four pins so we just need to trim off two of these the with the pins that come with the BMP 280 and for this part of the assembly I like to use a simple breadboard um, it just helps you make sure the pins are straight and uh, line this up so the VCC is on the outside pin and the other two will be empty okay when mounting the BMP 280 now you put the long pins through the board so they'll stick out through the bottom inside of the other pins at this point you can just you don't want those long pins so we just trim them off soldering the pins for the Wemos D1 Mini I use a breadboard as well that guarantees that they're going to be straight and it'll prevent the board from leaning I just put them the distance apart and then I line them up before mounting the Wemos D1 Mini socket pins I like to add the rest of the header pins uh, for the GPS and out to the video transmitter and just trim off a trim off three and then trim off four I put these pins skip a pin and that lines up for the GPS and the video transmitter solder one of these and then level the board the rest of the pins will be straight so I'm leveling it right here let it cool that'll hold it I'll do one of these over here if you get too much solder make sure you just keep a, a clean tip we should have the pins ready okay the, these are for the one side now we'll do the two extra over here that's for future development for ease of soldering I put the pins in the breadboard and then put the board on 
pins, solder the rest. Leveling it here with one pin, let it cool. Now we will put in the socket pins. These are the female headers that the Wemos D1 Mini will mount. I like using these because, it, number one, it gives you height over the rest of the components on the board so we can stack it. But it also allows you to remove the Wemos D1 Mini, program it, uh, or change it if you ever need to. And make sure you line up the board like the, the diagram on the board and then press this in. And we'll have the, the pins from the Wemos D1 Mini hold them in the position that they need to be. So make sure everything's flat and flush. There's no gaps at this point. So at this point, we can just turn this over flat. You'll see now the female header pins are poking through the back of the main board and we will now apply solder to those. And on this, I like to apply solder to one or two of them and then I'll use a, a little vise that I use for soldering. The board assembly here is complete. We are able to load the firmware now. Um, first I'm going to show how to install the optional momentary button that will allow you put to put the Qlite OSD into Wi-Fi mode. To use the momentary button, I just clip off two of the wires that come off one side. Bend them both out flat so it looks like this. And then clip off two and then solder two wires to the other side. And it doesn't matter which it is. But they have to come off the same side, just like this. Looking at the bottom of the board, you can locate the D3 pin uh, right here. It's immediately below the D2. You got D1, D2, D3. So this right here is the D3 pin, and then here is a ground pin. So for the Wi-Fi button, attach one of the two wires to each. And this is the button that I've put together. Basically soldered a wire to each one, and then shrink tubed it. And now I'm gonna attach, and it doesn't matter which ones you attach, what color. Um, just do the D3 in, in ground. We have the momentary button installed and all the pins should be clean now. Make sure there's no solder jumper between any of the pins and at this point we will load the software.